It was the last week of June, and I was about to begin my third day of my week-long canoe trip in northern Algonquin Park. The trip started two days ago when I launched from Algonquin Park's access point number one at Kawewemog Lake, located in the northwest corner of the park. Having three camping trips canceled in the previous weeks due to the pandemic, I extended this trip so I could slow travel by canoe and take advantage of the time I'd spend out there alone with no distractions. After spending the first day paddling into the park along the Amable Defond River, from Kawewemog to Kawawaskegamog, or North Tea Lake, I camped the first night on North Tea Lake and was treated to a beautiful sunset. The following day, I made the short trip from my campsite on the west arm of North Tea Lake to a small lake called Mangotasi. It was in perfect time to see the last supermoon of the year, and I had a great view over Mangotasi Lake, void of any light pollution. You never really know what to expect when going on a backcountry canoe trip, and the time that I'd be spending here in Algonquin still had a lot to come. Heading into day three, but the adventure was just getting started. I was alone in Algonquin Park for seven days, and now it's day three. Day three. Well, it's day three on this Algonquin trip. I'm on Mangotasi Lake, which is uh, just off of North Tea Lake. And today I have a little bit of travel to get over to Bigger Lake. So I'm gonna get some coffee, get my stuff packed up, get out on the water. And that's just what I did. Morning oatmeal, two cups of coffee, and pack everything up. Despite being relatively early, the wind was already starting to pick up on Mangotasi. I wasn't too concerned about it. It was blowing from the north and would be on my back as I headed to the first portage, and the day ahead would include a fair amount of time on land as I'd carry my gear and canoe between lakes. My main concern about the wind was that it could blow my hat off and that just wouldn't do. It was a quiet morning on the lake. There wasn't anyone else to be seen until I rounded this little turn and found that I wasn't the only ones enjoying the morning breeze. I always do my best to try and have a camera ready, but on long trips, it honestly sometimes slips my mind. I couldn't believe my luck that I'd have my camera out and rolling when I came across this moose. But I was even more pleased when I realized that she wasn't alone and her calf was bedded down in the grass to the right of her. The wind was blowing straight through this narrow channel that we were sharing and it would make getting any better shots near impossible, but I quietly brought the canoe near the opposite shore and pulled out the big camera. Zoomed in at 200 millimeters, 
it was near manageable, but I had to try to zoom in to 800 and at least try to get a close-up. The calf was now up and keeping her eyes on me while Mama pretended not to care. I could see the swarm of flies on the adult's rear legs and the bite wounds that they'd left. No wonder we see them so often getting relief in and around the water. After a few moments, they slowly headed back into the dense bushland, and our moment together was done. A few decent shots. My favorite, of course, is this one, with Baby sticking her tongue out at me. And they're gone. Okay, well, that was a nice morning paddle. Can't believe my luck of seeing two moose, not just two moose, but a moose and their uh, calf. That's, yeah, great way to start the day. So this portage is 240 meters, which isn't that much. Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting. You see wildlife, especially moose. I don't, well, not especially moose. But moose are, you know, they're a calm animal, and, uh, well, for the most part. Um, and the thing is that, you know, I'm out on the lake, I'm paddling, and it's a bit windy. I take the camera out, you know, I'm just doing my thing, and then I see the moose. You know, I share the moment filming the moose, and then afterwards, or even during the time, but during the time and afterwards, my whole sense of being just calms and, you know, quietens. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good feeling. The portage from Mangotassi to Hornbeam Lake is signed 240 meters, but the map I was using, Jeff's map, has it listed at 305 meters. Either way, it's just a short hop over land to get onto Hornbeam Lake, and Hornbeam itself wasn't going to be much more than a paddle across a big pond before another short portage at the Twin Falls.
thought I heard a noise. I don't mind traveling on my own. It's quiet and peaceful. But even after years of getting out into the bush, I still feel a bit vulnerable at times. I take the precautions that everyone should. I carry bear spray, have a small air horn for noise deterrent, do my best to be observant of what's going on around me, and most importantly, I try to not do anything stupid. I at least try. I was looking forward to seeing this waterfall and happy that I was taking my time and slow traveling through Algonquin's landscape, giving me the flexibility to actually explore some of the landmarks instead of just rushing through to get to that day's destination. It's easy to get tunnel visioned with the destination as the focus. Even here, in hindsight, I would have loved to take in an hour or so to cast the line and see if any fish were biting. So when I pulled in, I heard twigs snapping over to my right over here. So it's just a short little 90 meter portage, but I'm just taking the food bag and my paddle first, just keeping my eye out, looking around, see if there's something wandering about in there. And uh, then I'll go back and get other stuff. There is some big black hairy creature then I'd rather be lightly loaded than have a ton of weight on my back.
the last portage of the day completed. I was at Bigger Lake. The wind was blowing to my side at first, but it wasn't very gusty at the moment, and I knew it would soon be on my back again. This was my first time on Bigger Lake, and was an area that I wanted to visit for a few years, since my last time in the north part of Algonquin, when I did the Northwest Loop. The wind was beginning to pick up at times, and I thought I was due for a break, so I chose to stop at this campsite, which I'd hoped would have a nice view and a bit of a breeze to keep the flies away. Okay, so I just pulled in. I'm on Bigger Lake and uh, I pulled into this campsite basically just to get out of the canoe for a minute. Um, I'm gonna just rest. I think I would rather be on the other side of the lake for tonight, but just the wind keeps picking up quite strong. Uh, there was a surprisingly hectic moment just a little while ago so uh, and I got to this point and the winds the winds coming from behind me on the one side of the point and then on the other side of the point the winds coming across so I'm sure I could get around the point and just stick to the shore and go over but I think that uh, I can also just stop have a bite to eat have a drink relax and if this is a nice site, then at least have a look at it and maybe stay here the night. And it does look like a nice site. Actually, uh, I'm really happy. It's the beginning of the season and I actually passed some, uh, I don't know if they're wardens or service staff, but um, a couple going off, just cleaning up and you know, cutting trees that have fallen and stuff like that. And so far, this third day, there's hardly anybody here and the campsites have been cleaned up. So I'm surprised it's the end of June, but I guess because of the pandemic, things were closed, campers weren't out and it's still early in the season. So yeah, everything's nice. Everything's tidy. Somebody had a fire behind the rock. And they shouldn't have. Anyway, I'm gonna have some lunch.
After a bite to eat and a quick rest, I paddled out and down to the last campsite on the south side of Bigger Lake. Well, made it down to the far end, the last campsite on the south side. Um, so yeah, so I don't have that far to go before the start of the portage tomorrow. It's uh, Tomorrow's going to be a big day, so the further I could get down the lake today, the better. And yeah, the cleanup crew have been, everything's raked up and fire pits clean and yeah it's not that bad of a sight actually feels like i've got some shelter from the wind so i'm gonna unload the boat get the hammock hung find a spot to hang the food bag and uh, relax for a bit just looking at the map to see how far i've gone and how far i have to go um what i did today is about the same distance that I have to do tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's gonna be a bit more grueling though because it's gonna be more in and out of the canoe and much longer portages. I've got a 520 meter portage, a 1040 meter portage, a 320 meter portage, and a 1220 meter portage. Yeah, so, plus the canoeing. So then after that, so there's about half an hour paddling on the lake that I'm on, Bigger Lake. Um, then I've got Sinclair Lake, which is just a short jaunt. Uh, Kawa Lake, which is also quite short. Uh, Upper Kawa, which is tiny. Um, and then I'll be getting on to Three Mile Lake, and that's where I'll be spending tomorrow night. And then on Three Mile Lake, I've got, well, it's gonna be probably, well, I'd like it to be as far as possible, so. Yeah, I'll have to decide tomorrow, but it's gonna be at least an hour of a paddle at the end of the day. Um, the thing is, I see a campsite that I think I would like, but that's only about halfway across the lake. And the day after tomorrow, I have a portage that's 2,900 meters. So basically three kilometers. Anyway, yeah, it's been nice. It's very overcast though. I think that it's gonna rain. Um, it is calling for rain tomorrow and uh, actually for a few days, but. I think, I wish I could remember. I meant to print it out and I didn't. I think tomorrow's a heavier rain day and then it starts lightening up. I don't even know what day it is today. What, is, what day is it? I got here on Tuesday. Yesterday was Wednesday, so today must be Thursday. So yeah, so rain on Friday. Maybe heavy rain. Um, and then rain on saturday but i believe it's only like like light showers or 50 percent chance so we'll see but the sky does look like it's gonna rain so anyway i'll show you what i did to camp um i was gonna say as well looks like it's gonna rain i set up an extra tarp and the deer flies have been just horrible Okay, so starting down at, that's the put-in point, and then up into camp. I like to keep my camp pretty central, you know, with everything close by. So, um, you know, if I'm on my own, there's no reason to, 
take up too much space. It's a smaller uh, footprint on the environment and uh, saves energy as well, really. Um, also, it ensures that I don't leave gear anywhere because I basically have all of my stuff all in one spot. I don't have to look all over the place for it. Um, easy to unpack, easy to pack. So I've got my uh, water filtration set up here. So, all right, so I've got the Sawyer system. I'm not sure if they still make this one or not. Uh, I've got the hammock up and I threw a tarp under or over top. So you can see in there. Okay, because of the rain, I had the fly, the hammock fly, small tarp already set up, but I put on a 10 by 10 tarp as well. Um, it's just, that's a AquaQuest tarp, still nylon. Um, yeah, just hung the mandolin up underneath the tree. Uh, if it rains, the mandolin's actually in a plastic bag inside the case, so uh, it should be all right. I might move it right underneath later. We'll see. Uh, you know, I'm always a bit worried about it. It's not the cheapest instrument and uh, yeah, always worried about it, but it's nice to have as well, especially when alone gives me something to do. I actually think, you know, I wanted to play an instrument. I, don't get me wrong, I'm no expert. I uh, wanted to play an instrument and mandolin was small and light. I thought, you know, give that a shot. Nowadays, I think, geez, why didn't I pick up the harmonica? That would have been even smaller and lighter. Anyway, so yeah, uh, fire pit. I gathered there up just a tiny bit of firewood. There's tons out there. Um, so yeah, I'll get more before I start the fire. It's only around 5.30 now, so I'll do that in you know the next hour. I'm gonna start making dinner soon and then I'll get the fire going. And yeah, really that's it. So pretty simple. Um, yeah, it's setting up the, the hammock. You know, the only knots I used, I used a, I used a bowline at the point where it connects. So the, the guy lines here, it's just a bowline attached down here. And then at the, down at the bottom, I just have uh, taut lines. So, and that works good. Um, the hammock, I'm not sure what I used to tie it today. I think that I used a, a sliding sheep bend, uh, which is a type of mooring hitch. And it's the knot that I, I kind of sometimes use it, sometimes don't, but uh, it's pretty easy. So I think that's what I've got going there. And yeah, I don't know, not much more to say, but yeah, nice campsite anyway. good to wait.
you're supposed to add a tablespoon of oil to this, but yeah, I don't think a tablespoon of oil really matters. I think the main thing is that the seasoning gets broken down in the water, so I left some, what is it? It's like three tablespoons or something like that of, yeah, three tablespoons of water and one tablespoon of olive oil. Seasoning mix and mix well, and that's it. So it says uh, stir over medium heat until mixture sizzles. Well, I'm not doing that, but there's plenty of heat just in there from the pasta. I like adding the tomatoes. Um, they're really good when they're warmed up, so there's enough heat in there to warm them up. And uh, I wouldn't call it healthy, but yeah, it's nice though anyway. the cherry tomatoes that really do it. It's awesome. With camp set up, food in my belly, and the fire going, the only thing left was to sit back, have another light snack, rehydrate, and relax. Tomorrow, the trip would continue. <laughs>